Yo, what's up guys? It's Tim Burzens here, and this is a special video, because this is going to be a start of a brand new series I'm trying to do. Um, it's not really a series, but kind of a brand new habit, habit for myself. So I'm really big on doing morning rituals and having something that um, every single day you wake up to do to put you in a good state, productive state, resourceful state, so that you have an amazing day ahead of you. But on top of that, I like to do things that are uh, very Kaizen, small little things that if you do them every single day, you'll become so much better at them. Um, you know, in a month, in two months, in three months, in a year, just those skills build and build and build and you can become really, really great at something just from one small habit every day. So for me, it really occurred to me that I want to become amazing on video. I want to be just as good as I can do. Um, I want to be, become better at speaking and, and probably this will help me with public speaking as well. So I want to, as part of my morning ritual, as you can see, the sun's just coming up. I'm going to be filming a video every single day, posting on YouTube for you guys. So with that, let's go ahead and jump right into today's topic. Uh, this one is about the most metabolic macronutrient that you can eat. And you might have an idea of what this is, you might not, but let's we'll just cut to the chase. The most metabolic macronutrient that you can eat is carbohydrate. Now you may have heard that protein uh, is, is metabolic. You may be, have heard that there's a metabolic advantage to low carb diets, um, but let's explain that a little bit real quick. So protein has a higher thermic effect of food. And that means that when you digest protein, it takes more energy. But that's not really what we're talking about with metabolism. With metabolism, we're talking about ramping up the natural energy production of every individual cell when you're at rest. We're not talking about stressing your body and forcing it to burn calories through something like exercise or mechanical things like digestion. We're talking about purely uh, the cells functioning, the cells ability to just burn through energy as fast as it can. And that provides enough energy for the cell to do anything that it needs to do. All the long-term health functions, uh, hormone production, things like that all require the cell to just have tons of, an abundance of energy, ton, tons and tons of energy. So now what about low carb diets? For low carb diets, there's a specific reason why burning fat instead of carbs will lower your potential for metabolic rate. And it has to do with the byproducts that are created from energy production. So in fat burning, the, the big one, let's start with this, the big one is CO2, carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is so, so important for triggering your, triggering your body to increase uh, its energy production, to uh, reduce inflammation, to basically send a signal to your body, hey, everything's okay, plenty of food, go ahead and do all the long-term stuff, don't worry about the stress, it's not a famine, we don't have to worry about that, so go ahead and, and do all that stuff. Um, but the big one I want to talk about today is something that has to do with two effects called the Bohr effect and the Haldane effect. So these, uh, you can look up on Wikipedia if you want, give a brief little uh, synopsis up for you. But basically all it means is that in order to exchange oxygen into a cell, into your red blood cells, into your lungs, you have to exchange it with carbon dioxide. So in other words, in order to get oxygen into your cell, you have to have CO2 in order to change places with it. And if you, know, if, uh, you look at some of the research on high, people living in high altitudes, they all have... Uh, like these crazy health benefits from like cancer risk reduction um, you know uh, runners marathon runners who live in high climates are always you know in better shape and a lot of this has to do with that decreased pressure from oxygen which causes co2 to build up in the body and create a better exchange better basically a better efficiency of oxygen even though there's less pressure of it in the air so the two uh, main oxidative ways of burning fuel is either fat burning or glucose burning with oxidation. Now glucose can also be broken down um, without oxygen, but obviously that doesn't create CO2. And in fact, it actually creates lactic acid, which suppresses energy production. It tells your body that things are not okay. You don't want to keep burning energy. On the other hand, CO2, when you continue burning that over and over and over again, and releasing more and more CO2, you're basically telling your body you're, you're allowing more oxygen to get into the cell, to get into your lungs, and to continue moving. So when you're burning energy via the oxidative metabolism, whether it's burning fat or burning carbs, you will produce that CO2, and you will help oxygen to get into the cell. Now the problem is that fat burning creates two-thirds the amount of CO2 that glucose burning creates. Glucose burning creates all that extra CO2, which helps more oxygen get into the cell. And as long as there's still glucose, which is carbohydrate obviously, getting into the cell, then it triggers 
even more energy production, which triggers more CO2, which triggers more oxygen and more glucose. And the cycle just repeats and you end up getting more and more energy production. In fact, it can actually get to the point with the uncoupling proteins where you are burning so much glucose that you're actually wasting a lot of it as heat. You're not even using it for ATP generation. ATP is the energy unit in the cell. You're not even creating ATP, you're just creating heat. Basically the very last step in, um, in the metabolism, it's called the elect electron transport chain, it gets skipped. Those un uncoupling proteins skip them. It's not really important to know the specifics of it, but the point is that ATP is not created and your body just wastes it as heat, but still creates the CO2. So basically you put yourself in this state when you increase your metabolism to that point using glucose and the CO2 oxidative metabolism, you put yourself into a state where your cell is creating so much energy and wasting some of it as heat that if you ever need to increase your energy level from something like exercise or some sort of stressor, you might not even have to turn on the stress response because you have so much extra energy. And that's really what I mean by, uh, if you ever hear me talking about being resistant to stress, that's what I'm talking about with a higher metabolism and being resistant to stress. You're not even flipping into that stress metabolism that's characterized by fat burning and the glycolytic metabolism of uh, glucose, which it doesn't require oxygen. So that's the first one. The second one, the second reason that carbohydrates are so metabolic is that they increase your insulin sensitivity. So we talked about how important it was for oxygen to get into the cell. It's also important for glucose to get into the cell. You obviously need both oxygen and glucose in order to do the oxy oxidative metabolism. Um, but if, if you have poor insulin sensitivity, then glucose, when you eat it, will build up into your blood system and insulin won't do a good job of pushing it into the cells like it's supposed to. And obviously that's a problem. You can't get into the cells, you can't burn it. But eating, this is a, a huge thing that people are often very confused about and a lot of people in the low carb uh, community don't really uh, seem to ignore this idea, but there is a very known principle called the Randall cycle that is more free fatty acids in your blood compete with glucose to get into your cell, lowering your insulin sensitivity. So basically anytime that you are accelerating your, fat, your lipolysis, the break, breakdown of fat from your fat cells, or you're eating tons and tons of fat without the carbs, you are hurting insulin sensitivity by causing those free fatty acids in your blood to compete with glucose. Now, if you're eating more glucose and suppressing that lipolysis, you end up improving your insulin sensitivity because that glucose can get into the cell. And you might be wondering like, well, what about fat loss? You know, does that mean I'm gonna gain a whole bunch of weight? And in truth, no, you're not gonna gain a whole bunch of weight because when glucose is getting into the cell and burning and increasing that metabolic rate, you're always still gonna be burning some fat. It's, it's unavoidable. You can't avoid all lipolysis. You can't avoid all of the beta oxidation of fat, which is the breakdown of fat. And what ends up happening is that uh, we get that the old saying, or I don't even know if it's old saying, I don't know who it's even attributed to, but I love it, that fat burns best in the flame of carbohydrate. And that's why, if you ramp up your fat burning to be a large percentage of your energy production, your metabolism starts to decrease from a lack of CO2. If you increase your metabolism through glucose and burn more glucose and create more CO2, you might burn a smaller percentage from fat, but the overall amount is gonna be better and your cells are gonna be happier, you're gonna be uh, better long-term health uh, and you don't really have to go through all the negatives of, of dieting that a lot of people do when they go through into low carb. Things like cold hands and feet, cold body temperature, um, basically all the symptoms of low metabolism that we've talked about before. So those are the main two things I have for you guys today about why carbohydrates are the most metabolic nutrient. Um, and you know, honestly, if you really think about it from, let's like zoom out even bigger, let's just go out. If you're looking at the fact that um, in, in evolutionary times, when we were um, evolving from whatever we evolved from, carbohydrates would only be around during times of abundance, times when there's plenty of food, you know, like fruits would be around. Um, that's probably actually the biggest one would be fruits. And during times of famine, there wouldn't be as much food. We would probably switch over to eating more animals, but they're also dying off. So we're actually eating less food overall, relying on our protein stores and our fat stores in order to create energy. And so only during times of abundance would you have a lot of glucose in your body. And if you know the whole uh, starvation mode thing versus the whole um, abundance mode thing, starvation mode with the high stress is where you store fat. Your body doesn't think there's a lot of food, so it keeps storing fat. But during times of abundance, 
times of high glucose or high carbohydrate, then your body would know it's okay. There's plenty of food. I can burn this fat. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to store fat. And um, you can ramp up all the long-term stuff like testosterone um, production. The uh, digestive system can be improved. The immunity can be improved. Um, all those all, all those kind of things. So really looking at the, the big scale like that um, from the evolutionary terms, eating more carbohydrate tells your body things are cool. We're in abundance. It's all right. Um, I think that's my last point for today. Like I said, I'm going to be trying to do one of these every single morning, hopefully improving, iterating as we go, getting a little bit better every single day. And uh, if you want to do something, uh, one of these morning rituals on your own, what I call fire rituals, then um, post in the comments below. Let me know like what you're trying to do, what uh, Kaizen things you're doing, what um, state boosting things you're doing to make every day you know, fucking awesome. And uh, just uh, also let me know if there's anything that you want me to talk about because I'm going to need more topics. I'm going to be going through this um, every day, obviously, so I'm going to run through a bunch of stuff. But uh, yeah, I'm excited to get this going. So like, subscribe, help me out, get this information out to as many people as I can. And I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Peace.